All I need you to do is one final thing for me. With these laps, I want you to toss a baby in the air. Maybe don't toss the baby. I mean, unless it's your baby. I mean, you can do whatever you want if it's yours. But, uh, all right, it looks like we're ready to go. So, MCF Comic Con, day three. Who's ready for a show? And please put your hands together. Welcome to the stage. Your moderator, give it up for CJ. so far this weekend? It's been wonderful. Um, this is my very first time in London. Uh, I've never been to the UK before or Europe. Um, and I'm almost emotional. It's uh, absolutely wonderful. Thank you for having me. Thank you for coming. Yay! What about you guys? What's the event been like so far? Um, I've been to uh, London a few times, but uh, it's been a couple of years, and yeah, I just love the fact that there are so many fans over here um, working on these legacy shows that we work on. It's it's humbling, it's flattering. Um, I love the creative atmosphere of convention fans, the the acceptance, the diversity. Um, these are my people, and uh, it's it's such a pleasure to see you all again. So thank you. Fantastic. I'm thrilled to be here again, too. It's been uh, probably almost 30 years since I've been here. I did a show for the Beeb many years ago about World War II, of course. <laughs> World War II, they're fascinated, as, as we are in America, about World War II. So I was lucky to do something called Over Here. I, I worked last year at uh, Con in Wales, which was gorgeous, and I got to see a little bit of Wales, but I'm really grateful to be in London again, and you guys have been fantastic, fantastic friends. So thank you. Yay. It's great to be here. many of you again. I think especially now as the um, arc of Ash has come to its end, no. it's really great to be starting this journey forward together Woo! at this point. Yay. And, uh, it's on us to carry on positively. And thank you all. This is the first time we've ever been on a panel together. Yeah. And of course you know the amazing CJ, so you can take it away from here. Thank you guys so much. So, first of all, 25 years, it, it's so, I'm, I remember when I went to the cinema to watch it, and she's hearing kids crying behind me, <laughs> and I'm sat there kind of going, <laughs> I'm a horrible person, okay? But the impact that this movie has had, 25 years, you're here in London, first time together on a panel, what is that, what was that feel like knowing, wow, 25 years, seeing so many people come to see you guys, run again? Yeah, it's, it's incredibly, as Eric said, so humbling and awesome at the same time. The fact that we all love something so dearly and deeply that's connected us 
that we um, find so many things that we have in common, and then coming together for Pokemon, we find so many more things. But through all this time, and to see people who loved it when they were 10 and now come with their children, oh my gosh, it's incredible. It's, it's, uh, when we first started 25 years ago, um, we were in a little studio, and I, th I think I posted a picture of it on Twitter some time ago, and it was a small room with a few people, and I, it just didn't seem like anyone else outside of that room in America had ever heard of Pokemon. <laughs> and this is all before it went on TV. And uh, all I could find on the internet was just a really little pixelated picture of Pikachu as evidence that Pokemon existed, and they were just all Japanese text websites, mm. nothing in English. So I couldn't really research the show. Uh, but now that's all changed, very much so. And the fact that it has had such a positive impact on people, it's inspired them to be artistic and have communities, 56 and share it with their friends, and they've met their friends over their shared interests, and Pokemon was part of that. Uh, the fact that, that it went from our little group with a pixelated Pikachu to this huge community is unbelievable. It's incredible to me, and, I, and I'm very grateful to be a part of it. You know, and for so, us to be just the tiniest part of it has been yeah, really incredible. Very much so. Yeah. Very much so. Yeah, same for me. She mentioned something. Rachel just said something kind of very profound for me. I, I was a I'm mostly a theater actor, as you guys have kind of looked up my, my work over the years. And I'd done a Scottish play, if you know what that is. We won't talk about it beyond that. And someone said, you know, there's this great part. I've done a lot of Shakespeare. And they said, there's this great, great thing. It's called Pokemon. And I was like, what is that? Pokemon, it's big. And they called it a Jap animation at the time. Jap animation. And I had no clue what that was. And they said, you should audition, there's a bunch of parts, but there's one part, he's really dark, and he's, he's a little bit like that guy that you just played, and, and um, he's the villain. And I, I went into that booth and didn't think much of it, and then, then I got a call a week later saying, would you like to play this character Mewtwo? And how lucky, because I got to play not just what I discovered was not a villain, but a great, great character that has a lot of depth. And, um, but again, like Rachel said, and it was a little tiny room, and we met the director who was very quiet, he had very little direction for us, for me, except to you know, do it angrier, do it quieter, do it softer, and very kind of result-oriented things. So I didn't have a lot to connect to, but they also played the Japanese actor who'd done it, and um, I got a little key into what he did. But it wasn't until years and years later that I realized how profoundly it affected you guys, and how lucky I was to be a part of that. I just started doing these less than a year ago. One of my first cons was ever was with Veronica. And to get to meet her, again, we were we had scenes in the film together, and it wasn't yeah, until 25 right. years later that we actually got, got to meet each other in the flesh. And, um, and I've admired these, their work over the years, and to, to meet them has just been thrilling. And mostly to meet you guys, to have you come to the table and tell us how much this, this show means to you, this film. And um, it's bigger than me, and I'm very grateful to be a part of it. Yeah, this is actually the first time we actually met in person. Like, we, we, work, we work together on this film, and just that's how we dub the stuff. So, I come from the fandom side of this because I was watching Battle of the Planets, if you guys ever watch G-Force, and, yeah. and my favorite uh, uh, anime of all time, um, in, in fifth grade for me. So, you know, 12-year-old Eric, or 10-year-old Eric, whatever age I was, you know, I, I was probably like 30 years old in fifth grade. Um, I could imitate Casey Kasem, who played Mark in G-Force, that was my thing. And so when Pokemon came along and they needed a voice for Brock, I had to pay my homage <laughs> to Casey with some combination between Shaggy and Mark from G-Force. So I loved that stuff, and, um, and James as well. It's like th those two comedic, yet there's always something redeemable about the characters in Pokemon. It's not rocket science why this show has connected with so many people. The moral of the story is there, but it's never hit over the head with a hammer unless you're in Team Rocket. Um, Yay! But <laughs> every character has something that connects to everyone, right? Um, working on that show, 
I laughed doing, doing the roles that I played, or I cried during the roles uh, where the stories got, got sad. There was so much of it that was based on real emotions, and yet a fun show as well. And to see the fandom all these years later, um, people cosplaying as characters that I voiced, I, I get a thrill about that. Of course I had to go and say hello to Officer Jenny, because, you know, Brock is part of who I am. I have an action figure of Brock and an action figure of James that sit on the mixing board in my studio at home because they need to always be with me. And even if it's been many years since I've actually officially voiced those characters, like, th th this is part of my life. You have changed my life so much with your support of my work as well and our work. And I'm just so, I'm just so flattered and so humbled that this is 25 years later and we're still watching this stuff and trying to figure out how a frying pan can be a drying pan. <laughs> I think you brought up a really good point there as well, it's like the connection it's had with everybody and the fact that also it got a movie. What was it like when you've recorded this voice, you've done this character in your small little booths by yourselves, away from everyone, never meeting, and then thinking, well, I've done really well there, and then it gets out into the public, right. see the reaction. What was that? That obviously you must be nervous first of all waiting to see the reaction, but what was it like when you saw the impact it's had globally? It's like one of those shows that no matter where you go, everybody knows Pokemon. Well, well a lot of the show, like a lot of us had worked on anime before. And, and anyone will tell you if you are an actor, you will get told by whatever production team you're working with, this is going to be the biggest thing ever. <laughs> so we hear that so much that when you're told this is going to be the biggest thing ever, which it could be, we're like, that's great, okay, fantastic, I'm just happy that I'm working and maybe you'll bring me back tomorrow for more stuff. Um, yeah. Pokemon was one of those jobs that just seemed to like be one of the many we were working on, but slowly but surely we saw more advertising, we saw more posters, we saw kids playing with toys and cards, and it was like, okay, this is this is going well. And to, to say we were nervous, I was never nervous about the success of Pokemon. I also was on the production side. I directed a lot of the shows that we worked on as well. Okay, so I was behind the scenes too. It was like, I hope this is good. This this seems like a good uh, product we're working with um, or working on. So it wasn't ner nerves, but I remember the first day we dubbed for the movie. Now dubbing means we're matching the flap, right? Pictures already been drawn, we're watching the mouth move. Not a prelay movie or a show where we do the acting first and then an animator draws the pictures to what we've done. So we watch the screen to see how that character is moving their mouth, what their emotions look like, and we have the words on a page. Well, we worked in a tiny booth when we were working on the show and then we we're about to do this big movie. So they booked a huge sound studio and you walk into this room and it's this big screen now. Oh my goodness, now they really better make sure the lip flap matches, right? <laughs> and the director's sitting at a tiny little desk with his script there and we have a microphone and this giant screen and the room is way too big. It was more like, this is interesting. This, this is, is real. Yeah, this is kind of cool. That's, that was the day that I thought, this is the real deal. So yeah, that was, it was fun. But we had no idea, ever, that this was going to be like this. Yeah, I've, and for me, I, I kind of, and this has nothing to do with, with what it became for you guys, but I forgot about the job. It was just another job. And I was so happy to have it, and I, they said the same thing to me, it's going to be huge over here, it's going to be a big deal. And eventually I stepped away from the business as an actor, and um, there it was. I I'd go into Target, or I go and see stuff on Amazon, there's, there's, there's Pikachu again, and finally I started seeing a lot of Mewtwo. And I didn't, I have people come up, you're Mewtwo, did you do? And I kind of say, yeah, I did that many years ago, and it's, it's just another film, and I, I don't know much about it. Because of course I followed the games and I followed uh, what it became on some level, but it wasn't until someone asked me to do one of these where I got actually a chance to meet you guys that I understood how profound this is for people and how 
lucky I am to be part of it. But I think because I stepped away from the career um, for a while, I, there was a certain sadness to that for me at the time, and a sadness about kind of losing touch with Mewtwo a little bit, and then coming back to it as a gift and, and a blessing, and to get to meet these folks that are part of, and to re rediscover it, really. I, I, I got to rediscover what it is, and to really get in the guts of it and the stuff that you guys take home, and the, the emotional life of it, was very moving for me. So, it's all a blessing, and I'm really grateful to be here. Um, well, like I said, um, and like everyone is saying, we started from a very square one place. So, uh, as it grew, I could see it growing, but I didn't really feel it. I guess it was a sort of denial, maybe. Like, Maybe this, in six months, nobody will remember this. Because as an actor, you can't get too attached to things. Um, you give it, you do your best, you give it your all, you're professional, you show up, you hit your marks, you know your lines, you're kind to everybody, hopefully everyone's kind as well. And um, that's how you go through your lives, that's how you go through your days. But this kept going, and for some reason, and I, I don't know if I should use the word magical, but there was something <laughs> about Pokemon that made it keep going. And I felt very attached to the show, and I said, well, I, that's just because I enjoy it. But there was something about it that made, it did make sense to me. I had no idea, I don't think any of us had any idea, that it would become what it has become. But um, the fact that it captured so many people's imaginations um, is mind-blowing. So, as an actor, you're kind of in this... You're kind of an observer, like almost like a cynical observer, like, oh, that's just not... But then, this kind of defied that. So, <laughs> I was very... Um, it, 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 I'm still processing it, I think. <laughs> so, it was, and it's because of you. It's because of all of you. You care, you come to these events, you share with us your stories about how you grew up. And it's, it's all part of it, so it's amazing. Yeah. I do remember going into the premiere and thinking that the movie, the whole theater was empty and then realizing that most of the audience right, was under right. 10 and right. you couldn't see their heads yes, over that. the back of the seats. <laughs> so it's amazing that so there weren't that many shows for kids at the time movies and the fact that it so, made so much money, which mattered to some people, um, over that first weekend when it opened, yes. and most of it was half price tickets for children. So it's amazing, and now you guys are all grown up, and I can <laughs> see your heads now over the back of the movie. <laughs> there you go. I'm on the big screen there as yeah. well. Yeah. It's just, when you can see people's heads, it's I know. Doing well. <laughs> it makes a difference. And now everyone's taller than I am, which is really incredible. <laughs> That's not tough, though, to be honest. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> I'm going to get abuse for that later. I know it. Yes, it's very true. I'm proud of all of my height. I did carry my daughter's backpack for so many years, and that shrunk me. What, do I regret it? No. Yeah, blame Rena. Um, I do want to give this a lot of time back to the fans, so yeah. if I ask one question, if people would like to line up at the microphones, and we'll get some fan See? questions, we'll be able to put them on screen, we're going to get the lights on them as well. Um, as much as I, I've got loads and loads of questions personally I want to know, but I, I want to give, like, straight away, this, isn't this just amazing how many people are desperate to come and see you and speak to you? And in good shape that they're running to the microphone, so that's it. Right. Ash now, what I do want to say is, as you can see, there are a lot of people that want to ask questions, so please, one question only, don't make me be a horrible person yeah. and tell you to shut up. Yeah. I'm a Geordie, I will. And we'll <laughs> give you the good answer, but we'll also try to keep the answers brief so that everybody gets a chance, alright? So we as a team will try to cut to the chase. I'm ready, team. Alright, let's do it. Does this sound good? Are we ready? And please give us your name as well, okay? So we'll go to my left here. Would you like to start us off? Hi. Hey. That sounds good. My name's Amy. Um, and also, like, hi. Hi, hi Amy. <laughs> so, with Ash's journey sadly over, I was wondering if you 
you guys could answer in character. Um, how does Misty feel about Ash not giving her a new bike? <laughs> <laughs> Why? Are we still talking about that old thing? I mean, uh, uh, yeah. um, uh, Ash, 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 hello, hello, over here. Miss, uh, yeah. right here. Uh, I think I can hear you. Yeah, yeah, I'm right here. Oh, I, you can't yeah. miss you. Hello. I'm moving, moving, how are you? Um, yeah, you know, I found a whole bunch of bikes online. I've chosen my top five that I want you to buy for me. And you choose one of them. And I'll tell you whether or not you're going to buy it. If you if you pick one and I don't like it, then I'll just I'll just control everything. Awesome, Misty, because mostly we barter here, and I, I have no money. <laughs> um, <laughs> let me ask my mom, or better yet, Mr. Mine. <laughs> <laughs> well done. Hey! And that's a deleted scene from the movie you never saw. <laughs> okay, to the other side here. Hello, my name is Matt. Hello. Pleasure to meet you all. Um, I, first of all, I just wanted to say um, a big thank you, personally, from me, as, as an inspiring voice actor, hearing you throughout my childhood. It's been an incredible journey and wonderful to hear, and it's been an inspiration to me and probably several others here. So, first of all, thank you for everything that you've done. Hey! So, thank you for that. Um, but one question I always ask myself as a kid, um, if you were all yourselves to start your adventure as a Pokemon trainer and you could choose any Pokemon to be your starter for your entire adventure, who would it be? That's easy, I'm Squirtle and the entire Squirtle squad. So Um, he's my soul, so <laughs> none of these humans, unique humans. Plus he's got great thighs. Yeah, he's so he really, 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 like, yeah. powerful Pokemon. I can't say anything other, so um, it's me too. Um, I would choose Gyarados. I love uh, water Pokemon. It's not, it's, I don't know, it sounds like a bias, but uh, either that or Jigglypuff. Yay! Yes. I would take Pikachu. I think um, their relationship is so great, and I think it's a true testament to how, how life is never easy. We often have to compromise, but the best results often come from that as well. Good. All the wrong answers. It's Togepi. <laughs> Togepi. Thank you very much. Yeah. Thanks. Thank you. And good luck to you with your career. Um, just to the side here. Hello. Can you reach? Hello. Hello. My name is Monique and my question is, how do you think you connected with your characters in the movie? Or if there's anything special that you kind of connected with your character or your Pokemon that you had? They need my job. Yeah, good question. That's a good question. Who wants to start with Um, well, uh, Jesse is, um, I guess both in the movie and in the TV series, I connected with her because um, <laughs> she just, I, I think it was because of her, the team uh, energy that she had with Team Rocket, I think because they played <laughs> off each other so well. I didn't relate to her as easily, but because of that dynamic, I got into her character more. And I love backstory episodes, so whenever we found out more about her, I enjoyed that, so it helped me. And with Misty, Misty's the youngest of four girls. I'm the youngest of six girls. So that completely made sense to me at the get-go. In fact, when we first meet Misty's sisters, they're being, you know, mean to her. <laughs> and yeah. um, the director said, okay, Misty's sisters are mean to her. And I said, yeah, I got this. <laughs> but it was not, not that my sisters were always mean to me, but you know how this whole sibling dynamic works. But yeah, I would say those are the those are the ways I did. For me, um, the first three words that Mewtwo speaks are "Who am I?" And that's really what my journey's been about. And he becomes a spiritual character. He becomes someone who actually literally roams 
his world and tries to figure out why he's created. And he's very angry about it. And I've had many angry moments in my life. But mostly what grounds me is my, my connection spiritually to something bigger than myself. And I think that's what he finds along the way. And for someone who's, you know, born angry and somewhat evil and malicious, to find something that's higher than himself is quite profound. And I'm very grateful to be part of his journey. So my connection, let's see. I went to a school that was really funky and hippy-dippy and whatever, and we used to play sports against very, very posh private schools. And so my connection with James at first was to figure out a way to be one of the Crane brothers, Frazier, <laughs> Niles, and James. Um, I was sort of playing on that, but his personality, I felt like Team Rocket's comedy. Yeah. I related to that, and to make friends in school, I was the new kid in school, my thing was, if I can make people laugh, maybe I'll make friends. That was my, my entree. So, I loved the comedy. I felt like Team Rocket didn't really care what else was going on in the episode. My job for those short moments when we appeared um, alongside Rachel is, I'm going to make you laugh. So, I loved that part of him. I loved his witty lines that were designed for the parents that had to bring their kids to see the Pokemon movie, which you are now discovering what the double entendres were that I was saying now that you're an adult. Um, not things that were inappropriate, but things that were definitely, ah, now I get it. And as for Brock, being a boy in high school, distracted by shiny things, well, that's pretty much life imitating art. <laughs> I can relate. I think what, what appealed to me about Ash was just that he was overall positive and gung-ho, and he just did it. And I love that. I played a lot of sports uh, when I was growing up and through college, and I thought that just how athletic he was and kind of fallible, I just, I really love that. I think he, he is all of us. And it was lovely to play him and jump into those sneakers. Awesome, and well done, that was an amazing question. Yeah. Question. Uh, we'll jump to the other side here. Thank you. Thank you. Good afternoon, everyone. Yeah. Uh, my name is Ibrahim. Hey. I actually just want Hello. to uh, echo a very sincere thank you for everything you've done. I was born into a world of Pokemon, so it's very much all I've known. I feel like, similar to many of us, when I found out the journey was ending, it low-key did kind of break my heart. And so my question is, what is one of the life lessons that you've learned from each of the characters you portray, and how you would adopt that afterwards, and how you would recommend us in carrying on that journey, as Veronica said, how we can adopt that life lesson as well. Mm. So it might sound cliche, but I'm going to say it's friendship, it's relationships, it's how you interact with other people. I think these characters, I mean, I, I, I don't think I'm going out on a limb to say I don't think Ash hates Team Rocket. No. No. Right? They're not, they're not f fighting with each other. There's a dynamic with all of them. And it, the lesson that I got from the moral of this show and this series was how you treat other people. That's really, you know, that really is the, we should be kinder as people. For me, I mean, it's, it's very much in the philosophy of Mewtwo at the end. He comes to a place where he says, it doesn't matter how we got here. It's what you do with your life that determines who you are. And that's, that's very much what I've learned on my journey. So um, that's it for me. I, I very much agree with, with uh, Eric and Jay. That's a very, very much so. Um, I guess from, I guess from Team Rocket's uh, adventures, um, I learned that um, you know how they say the uh, definition of insanity is doing the same thing over and over again <laughs> and expecting a different result. And I think Team Rocket was doing the same thing over and over again. They were trying different ways to get the same objective, but they never could quite do it. Hey. And in the canon, we learn that Team Rocket just kind of moved on and uh. they did something else with their lives. And I think that's a very important thing to know, is that 
how to let go at the right time. And once you found your family, you found your tribe, hopefully. Um, and I think uh, Ash, Misty, and Brock were an example of people who had already kind of found their peace in their tribe. And maybe Team Rocket was kind of aspiring to that in a way. Um, so that's the thing I really, really grew to appreciate playing those characters. I agree with all three points, and I would just like to add on top that I think from Ash we learned that it's you are stronger when you help others achieve their goals when you are on the path to achieving your own. That we are stronger together, and that um, we're better for helping others than just thinking about ourselves. So I think all of it goes back to community and friendship and purpose and timing, I suppose, knowing yourself to know when to move forward and when to let go. Yeah, amazing. It's just a cartoon, but you know, it's so amazing. Thank you so much. Yeah. And it turns out our next question is from the real star Pokemon. It's actually Pikachu. Oh, finally. Hey, Pikachu. Hi, buddy. <laughs> Is, if you had a chance to meet the character slash characters that you voice, what would you say to them? Ah, uh, good job. I mean, good job. You've done so well, Ash. <laughs> <laughs> Do we have to tell, we just tell them as, as like Eric would be saying this to no, me, right? I am Delia. I would tell Brock, hey, just dial it back a little bit. <laughs> <laughs> you know how to cook, you know how to clean, you're a good guy. If you just dialed it back, you would probably find that partner you were looking for. <laughs> James, I would say, I, I understand the collection of the bottle cap stuff. I'm a collector of things too, um, but uh, just don't become a hoarder. That's what I would say. <laughs> <laughs> I would say to Mewtwo, you need to work the upper body next time you're in the gym. <laughs> um, biceps in particular, the chest needs some work, the thighs you can leave alone for the rest of your life. <laughs> and to Dr. Fuji, I would say thank you for creating Mewtwo, because we got, but again, upper body. You skip leg day. <laughs> yes, no more legs. Any calves. <laughs> Oh my goodness. Well, to Misty, I would say um, it's going to be okay. Your sisters are uh, going to come back. I'm sure you're going to be a fine gym leader. It's going to work out. Uh, to, and you know, appreciate your friendships and just be okay with it. They'll come back to you. Um, and to Jesse, I suppose I would say, you know, you have a really good thing with your friends here, and you don't need Team Rocket to feel a part of something. You already are a part of something. So, yeah, I would probably tell the books to chill out a little bit. Um, and I would also tell Jigglypuff to chill out a little bit. I don't know what it says that I keep voicing all these hyperactive <laughs> characters. But yeah, I, I, think, they, I think they all uh, we're a little extreme, and then they kind of pull back. Awesome. I'm still trying to get over the fact Mewtwo's the only Pokemon that only does leg day. Everyone else forgets, but Mew's like, leg day. Yeah, just... Right, what we're going to do, because we've only got ten minutes, I want to try and get through as many questions as possible. Yep. So we're going to do quick, fire questions. Here we go, speed okay. round. So we'll start on the other side here. Let's go. Hi. Hi. Um, firstly, I'm 25, so I've been born with this. What is your favourite piece of Pokemon memorabilia that you guys have? I'm going to say the drawings that people have brought me. Incredible. Uh, yeah, she took my answer, so I'm going to say I have a Squirtle tag on my uh, luggage that I, I love to, I just love to subtly flash that around to see yeah. if anyone notices. Yes. Same for me with regards to what Veronica said, the artwork people bring up is incredible, and some of it just, just amazing artwork. And, and someone brought me a Mewtwo puppet, a marionette, which was just unbelievable. Yeah, artwork and the sculptures. People make all sculptures out of clay, resins, and everything. The creativity is amazing. It's unbelievable. I'm going to draw you all the worst version of your characters, and then you're going to have to fake and join us from it. Like, wow! That's I still like it yeah. from you. Yeah. Yeah. 
you know what? I'm going to draw you a picture later now, Brian. Right, thank you for the Great question. question. Uh, thank you. Next quick fire question. Boom. On behalf of those of those who started watching it at the age of 10 when it first came out, I just want to say thank you. You really helped us all. And for those of us now who are a bit older, did you ever see the Bad Bikini episode? Yes. <laughs> Because I was on the production side, so I got to see all the crazy stuff. That's a bikini episode? <laughs> and we can go very deep into why that was banned, but I will tell you this. Movies like Some Like It Hot, shows like Bosom Buddies, movies like Tootsie, and all of those things have corrupted me. Oh wait, no they haven't. <laughs> okay, we'll move on, on the other side here. Hi, Charlotte McRidge. Um, my question was, um, have either of you played either the original games or watched the Japanese versions of the episodes in the movie and see how they differ? Ooh, we didn't watch a lot of the original uh, episodes. Well, because I was directing the show, I had to watch original stuff, but not as an actor, but, but behind the scenes, yes. And no, I've never played the game. I'm a Destiny 2 player, okay? All right. Hey. I was lucky enough to see the film, the Japanese version of the film. Someone got a pirated copy of it. It's very hard to find over here, but you see bits of it on YouTube. But I, I got to see the whole thing uh, in a pirated copy of the original film. Uh, the only time I ever saw the Japanese version of it was at the very first audition for Pokemon, when they were showing a loop on the video. That was it. It was like five minutes of it. And the only game I've ever played is uh, Pokemon Pinball. Good question. Thank, Thank you. you. Rock. I, oh, wow. Oh. Hello. Hey. Rock, what is your question? I'll get back. Okay, okay. <laughs> hey, I'm Rock. I was just wondering sort of how you find the character and how you channel them when you're on the set or on the set trying to come up with what's on screen. How do we cha channel them? Yeah. I think all the characters we play have a little bit of any actor, right? You want to bring your personality to it, a piece of that. Um, uh, especially with these characters, um, there are definitely parts of me in all of the characters that I voice. I mean, Brock, as I said, you know, I could definitely relate to that. But I think we all have different approaches to how we act, right? How we do that. Um, I draw from my reality. I definitely do that. Same here. Exactly what he said. That, that would be the same for me. I mean, and I was feeling particularly lonely at the time, so that was why. Just broken up in a relationship, and I, you know, Mew 2 was very much there, so... Mm -hmm. Yeah, um, you you uh, don't have, I think in this particular instance, in this particular job, in my experience, we didn't have a lot of raw material to work from. I didn't get a lot of descriptions. So it was really step by step, scene by scene, line by line. And I don't think the production team knew a lot about it yeah. at the beginning. Yeah. So we all found out together. So it was almost like an ensemble effort to figure out who these characters were. And you're really playing the moment from the script, looking at the picture, and trying to just fill the moment. So, thank yep. you. Yep. Thank you. Good question, Brock. Right. On, on your journey. And you look amazing, by the way, as yeah. well. Excellent so, cosplay. Bless you. Thank you. Um, to the other side here, quick fire question. Uh, Hello there. Um, my name's Michael. Um, very quick. Well, I'll try to be quick anyway. This, so I can ask you a million things. Um, uh, thank you. Just thank you. Everyone, everyone that said it. Thank you. Yeah huge impact on the life. Um, my wife often says, when I say I love that, she goes, well, uh, is it as much as Pokemon? So we have that back on the <laughs> But uh, quick question is, uh, what's your favorite line you've said in your reprise roles throughout the series? I'll just use my trusty frying pan as a drying pan. <laughs> <laughs> I have to say the same, I know it's repetitive, but it is what you do with the gift of life that determines who you are. <laughs> Pikachu, I choose you! Awesome. Good question, thank you. I knew you were going to say that. Right, next. Uh, hi, my name's Patrick, and my question is, what do you think Ash's legacy is meant for the show? I think that Ash has taught us that it's okay to be yourself, that you can, um, even though you're trying to find your way, you can still help others find theirs. And I think that all of us carry on his journey because we are Ash. And I think he's, he has taught us that to go for your goals, know that the path to get to it is quite windy, 
but to just enjoy every minute along the way. Brilliant, thank you very much. Uh, next question on that side here. First of all, I'll register to take this Taylor. And from Scandinavia, thank you so much for our childhood and being part of our lives. Thank you. But ask my question, if you guys lived in a Pokemon world, what kind of job would you have? Trainer, gym leader, professor, what a... Oh, wow, I've never thought of that. What job would we have? I think I might be working research because I used to do that. I used to wear a lab coat and work in a lab and I probably would be a Professor Oak kind of, or Oak adjacent character. <laughs> Do, do they have like a Pokemon like rescue? Because I, I do a lot of stuff with like rescue animals and stuff like that. I think that I would do that. I would try to find homes for abandoned Pokemon. Why are the team rocket there so god that wholesome? <laughs> well, you asked Eric. You didn't ask the character. <laughs> I think from you too, he'd be some kind of spiritual advisor for people. I think he'd, he'd find a, a way to offer advice to people on some level. Uh, he, might, he might even go into some sort of Organized religion, I don't know. Me too. Me too. And he would be working people out of the gym constantly. Yeah, like that, like that. I think I would hope to be able to become a master and then a mentor, master mentor along the way to help people and maybe um, help them learn how to read maps. It's quite handy in the Pokemon world. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Seriously, thank you thank so you. much for asking my question. I am going to have to be so mean here and say this is going to have to be the last question of the panel. However, they are here all day and they are autographs, so if you want to go ask them there, you can go see them. So Ace Ventura there will have to be our last question. <laughs> Sorry guys, you'll have to head back to your seats there. Uh, a final question, please. No pressure for this one then. Where do you see Pokemon coming in 25 years now? The next 25 years. Oh, hello. A very old Eric Stewart stumbling onto the stage. <laughs> <laughs> ah, um, better upper body. That's what I'm working for. <laughs> 25 years from now, um, I think it's probably going to. I think. I think it might take a break for a while. I think it might go on hiatus and then come back in a slightly different form. That's, they might take a break and it'll come back in a, I don't know. I, maybe they'll try to do what they did before, but in a very different way. I don't know, that's a good question. That's the interesting thing is how through all of these years, like I said, I've seen so many of you when you were 10, when you graduated from university, when you found a spouse, when you brought your kids over. In 25 years, your kids will be bringing their kids. <laughs> that is a lot to think about. But the amazing thing about Pokemon is that it does live inside all of us and we find some comfort in it and something exciting to pass along to our family, to our friends. So I do hope that what we love about Pokemon is what we carry into the future with us. And I hope that we all can gather again, well before then too, but that we can gather again to talk about where our lives have taken us and how this little boat of Pokemon has floated us along the river together. And then we can dock in places and join up and get back on our boats. But I do hope that it's something that we can continue to carry along with us because I know for all of us, it has changed our lives in the most positive way as you have changed our lives in the most positive way. And I sure do hope we can continue to do that. Um, I think the world of all of you. So thank you so much for this. Thank you. I also need to get a photo before we go from the stage. So if you guys... Do you want me to take a photo of the four of you with the crowd? Yes, we do. We've got a landmark moment, and you guys are part of it, so thank you. Yeah, let's take a photo of you. If you guys want to jump in the front here, I'll take a photo.